Hi everyone, welcome back to Lazy Programmer. Now till this point we know how we can create multiple threads to utilize the multi-threading functionality of Java. That helps us improve the performance drastically. But do you think that managing the complete lifecycle of multiple threads manually by a developer is a good option? Not only managing the lifecycle, but there is a huge overhead associated with creating and destroying the threads again and again that we have already discussed in our previous example of thread pools. So the question is, what could be a better way to manage those thread pools? Should they be managed by developer or there should be a framework to manage those pools? To understand this, let us discuss an analogy from real world. Imagine you are running a busy kitchen. There are two main components. One is cooking a different item and second one is chef who will be actually cooking those items. So in this, cooking job is like a task to be performed and chef is similar to the thread which will be performing that particular task. Now you want every order to fulfill with ease without creating a mess. And you do not want to interfere in the process also. That is, you do not want to manage the chefs to make them ready for the orders placed and handling the order when the order is fulfilled, right? You want to dedicate your own time to work on more important work like how to expand your business. So to do these small tasks which are required in kitchen, you decided to hire a manager. The duty of that manager will be to keep the chefs ready and then take the orders from customer and assign chef to the order so that they can prepare that requested item. In the end, when order is ready, the manager should make sure that prepared item reaches the correct customer. So all in all, every task related to orders and getting chefs ready is the responsibility of that kitchen manager. Now consider executor framework is the kitchen manager which you have hired. Like the manager, executor framework will be responsible for making sure that pool of thread is ready and when any task is submitted, then it is responsible for assigning the available thread from the pool to perform that task. Once the task is complete, if there is some return value required, then executor framework will make sure it reaches back to the calling client in the form of let's say future objects. Future object is nothing but it contains the result of executed task. The executor framework helps in organizing tasks, assigning threads to execute the task and making sure everything runs smoothly. Now let's talk about few interfaces which are available in Java under executor framework. First is executor interface. This interface was introduced in Java 1.5. It contains a single method execute which expect a parameter of type runnable and it does not return anything. Whether that runnable task to be executed in a new thread or from a pooled thread that completely depends on the executor implementation that you will be using. Another important interface is executor service which extends the executor interface. Executor service interface provides additional method definitions from standard executor interface. An executor service can be shut down which will cause it to reject the new task as well. An unused executor service should be shut down to allow reclamation of its resources. You remember that execute method from executor interface does not return anything. But with the task where we need to get some result back, in such cases, we can use callable instead of runnable tasks. So to manage those return values, executor service interface provides declaration of multiple overloaded submit methods, which accepts runnable or callable tasks and return future type of objects. We will see all these methods and some other functionalities in action in our hands-on sessions also. There are multiple implementations available for this interface such as abstract executor service, fork join pool, scheduled thread pool executor, thread pool executor. These are the actual classes which provide how the thread pools will be managed and the task execution will be done. Lastly, we have one more interface which is scheduled executor service interface. It is also a kind of executor service only but it can schedule commands to run after a given delay or execute periodically in the future. The schedule methods create tasks with various delays and return a task object that can be used to cancel or check the execution. 
the schedule at fixed rate and schedule with fixed delay methods create and execute tasks that run periodically until they are cancelled. Now to summarize this session, the executor framework is your manager for Java tasks that you want to run using multiple threads. It organizes, optimizes and ensures a smooth flow of tasks. I hope the concept of executor framework is clear to you. And we also have discussed the important interfaces which drives how executor framework actually should work. In the next session, we will start with different implementations of those interfaces and see how executor framework makes a developer's life easy. If you found this introduction helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.